Welcome to this week's episode of Everything Outdoors AZ. This week is an instructional guide of taking this precharged air rifle using Duracoat to this. Well, I'm really happy how this overall project turned out. This is the first video in a three-part series. The second video will be all about the Duracoat, the things that I learned about it, and how to mix up the colors to get this scheme. The third video will be the airbrush and equipment that I used and details on that. A couple of disclaimers, I had a lot of video equipment issues as I made this, so in the beginning stages there's not a lot of good quality video of some of the steps, so I apologize ahead of time if you're wondering why I included that in the video. It's only the footage that I had to, to show that step. I'm going to talk about a few of the things and pieces and parts that I used to create this scheme. If you just want to see how the overall look was achieved, go ahead and fast forward to this timestamp right here. And you can do that if you want to know some of the, the basic things that you're going to need for this project. We're going to cover that next. Some of the things that I used here, I've got these 220 grit sanding discs with uh, quarter inch foam pads on the back. Works really great versus just straight sandpaper. Use 91% isopropyl alcohol to clean the gun before I painted it. I know some people will disagree with that or want to use some specific product, and you certainly can. I just wanted to use things that were local and easy to get. And then you'll need some kind of latex gloves or some kind of uh, gloves to handle the firearm once you've cleaned it so you don't get oils from your skin back on the gun. Picked up this football jersey from a local thrift store and that's what I draped over the gun to create the sub pattern here. And then you'll need yourself your tape and your razor knife to cut out the stencil patterns. I use a cutting board and painter's tape, and a tip on that, if you want this jagged edges that I have here, you really have to exaggerate cutting it out with the knife. Um, you think you're being really aggressive, and you get done, and you'll see on the video, when I put the stencils on the back part of the gun here, they really start to come out looking more like a flame job on a car, kind of smoother than this jagged kind of ripped look, and so I had to take those back off and then create more aggressive stencils to get this this look um, and we'll cover that uh, a little bit more in detail as we go through this video um, if you uh, like what you see here hit us up in the comment sections let us know the things you love about the video things you wish were different don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button um, and as we go through this process one thing I've noticed and take a look here real quick on this picture the first two guns in the front I did with Rust-Oleum from a hardware store and they have a lot more shine to them even though they're matte and this this Duracoat really has a soft matte finish to it. it almost looks like suede and so there's not a lot of light reflection from it so for camouflaging uh, anything or creating a camouflage pattern this is a really great great paint to use so uh, let's go ahead and jump right into it and take look at take look get my tongue tied here look at some of the steps to get this overall look accomplished all right we got our sanding done i used this 220 grit foam sanding board uh, to sand preparation really is key take your time get this right on the next image you'll see the gun completely cleaned with alcohol first all right i have the gun taped and ready to go uh, you can see right here, did the uh, optics in the front, got it taped off, got all the, the sensitive areas, the numbers. I'm going to take these two, the two caps are just going to come off right here. When I spray, I've got the rubber soft squishy part of the recoil pad, even though this gun doesn't have any recoil, but it's still a squishy part. So if it gets bumped or moved, uh, you know, the paint tends to crack on it, so I covered that. So. Everything's taped up and ready to go. Well, as you can see, my camera did not pick up me painting this part of the gun, but it's pretty straightforward. You're just simply going to paint a base coat. I ended up using a small airbrush. That took forever. In hindsight, I would use that touch-up gun I just showed you from Harbor Tool and Freight. That would be a much better option. In fact, I show that in this next step, painting the texture over this first base coat. Um, I picked up this really inexpensive touch up spray gun. I'm just going to get it in the right thing here. There you go. From Harbor Tool and Freight. Super inexpensive. Um, something like this is going to be better to fan and spray uh, the basic gun and then uh, take the airbrush to go in and get all these little tiny pockets and holes where really a gun like this is just going to be a little bit, a little bit much. 
Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to put the texture on the gun uh, that's going to be seen on the lighter color of, of the two color patterns. We're going to use our woodland tan and a few drops of our woodland brown here uh, just, to, just to give this a little bit more uh, dark color so that it, it has a little bit more contrast than what these two tans have uh, together. So I'm going to mix that up uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and fast forward the video and show you what I'm going to do for the texture. I went down to a local thrift store and I bought this. Uh, basically, it's like a football jersey that you would, you would put on, uh, you know, blacks versus reds, yellows, blues, whatever. This happens to be a black one. And what I'm going to do is drape this over the gun like so. And now there's no, there's no right or wrong in how you, you do your spray textures. There's different ways that you can do it. The further, uh, the further away from the object, like right here, you can see this is kind of off, off the stock a little bit. It's not laying flat. You got a few places where it's indented. What that's going to do is it's going to give you a little bit more of a, a diffused pattern, okay? And almost even like a, a 3D effect, like they'll come in and out of focus. So you have to decide if you want to do smaller strips and get it all tight if you want to hold it away from the gun, or in this case, it's a gun, whatever, whatever thing you're spraying, and you know whether you want that tight pattern or a loose pattern. So you have to experiment with that, spray on some cardboard, things like that. I'm okay with the variations. And what we'll do is we'll put our, our color in our, our touch-up gun here, and we're just gonna take it, I got air now, and we'll get the air started. And we'll come right across it like that, back down like that, and that's going to mist the paint onto the gun. Here's some close-ups of what it looks like. Once you get your gun sprayed, it's time to do the stencils. All right, let's get started here. Uh, we're going to start on this first piece here. So I'm going to cut out a, a little bit of a wider piece. And it's been a long time since I've done this, so a little trial and error here for me as I get ready to do this. Um, what I learned in the past is, is this, these are jagged. Um, you're not looking at trying to do something really smooth. So the more jagged you make it, the better. Okay, we've got about, um, maybe not quite half the gun done. When I started doing it, it wasn't coming out right. I, I actually took a video, fast forwarded through it. Um, I'll do that on the second half. But what I was finding is that it was coming out looking more like a flame paint job you see on a car. Not what I wanted it to look like is like the camouflage that was put on the gun. It was like torn off, right? These jagged pieces. So I had to go back and take those off and, and experiment with my templates and remember what I did on my other guns. And I'll hold this up in front. So this is what the board looks like. Um, you can see the jaggedness of the lines that I cut out. That's what I like about doing this on your own is, is now I can actually take these cutout pieces. You know, you see, you see the pieces I cut out, but then I've got all these leftover pieces that I can actually make into the second half of the gun 
or just retape a whole other board and start over, which I will do for like the barrel up here. It's going to be a long, um, a long skinny piece that wraps around, kind of like a candy cane, if you will. Creates a nice effect on the barrel. When you try and just do the stripes this way, it just doesn't really, um, looks like a ringtail cap. It just doesn't really do much. But doing kind of the corkscrew on there, I found looks a lot better. So we'll finish off the stripes right here. Um, we'll do the same thing on this bipod. We'll actually kind of wrap a spiral around down the feet. And then we will be, you know, ready to go shoot paint. Um, this is what the other side looks like. So you see each side has its individual uh, characteristics, um, but that's what makes the gun unique. That's what I like about it. You can tailor, like you can see right here, the volume adjustment for the, for the uh, air pressure. Uh, you know, I was able to cut around that. And so I don't have, have to, to try and tape over that. So anyways, I like this, uh, gives you an idea on what, what you need to do. So we go ahead and, so we have everything taped up. Everything that you see, see that you see that is yellow will be this lighter color right here. So you can see when we do the pattern spray, it really doesn't matter if everything on your pattern is perfect because you're not going to see the entire thing. You're just going to see pieces and spots of that pattern. And, and the main thing I'm trying to do, what I've learned, is you want the pattern to kind of, if you want to create a 3D effect, you want the pattern to kind of flow from spot to spot so your eye sees a pattern underneath that's continuing. You don't have to do it that way. I've seen people put skulls underneath there. I've seen them do random haphazard patterns. You can do whatever you want. Um, but like if these, these uh, kind of like almost like little diamonds, if the diamonds are going different directions on each of the, each of the shapes, it doesn't really flow through. It still looks good. It's just a different effect. Um, I wanted one to kind of flow through so that you, you saw that underneath pattern, like almost like rep, you know ripped off a wrapping, you know, if the gun was vinyl wrapped or whatever, and you ripped a piece off and you saw what was down below it. Um, is what I'm kind of going for here. And anyways, I think I have enough of the, the yellow, but what's what's difficult is, is you see all this tan still and you look at it like, oh, I like that color. And when you spray it the darker color, all of a sudden this gun's gonna become a lot darker because you've got more dark than you have light. So you have to pay attention to that. If you wanna put more uh, of the tape on, you could, uh, more of an accent color for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that brown that we have and I'm gonna actually mark, uh, mix it two parts that brown with one part this, uh, this darker, the, the accent color that we put in here just to kind of lighten it up a little bit so we don't have such a huge contrast. I wanna get it, uh, and, and if it still looks a little dark, I might add a little bit more of the, the light color in there. Um, but I wanna bring the dark color and this base color a little closer together, uh, just so we don't have black and white uh, appearance in there. I want a little bit more of the desert uh, browns to come through, not necessarily woodland or, or you know the darker, like you'd say, like mossy oak has more of a dark feel to it. So see if I can get that effect to come out the way I want it to. See if I can get it to to uh, be the right color. All right, we're ready to paint, so we'll uh, get to it. Well, here's where my video camera is cut out. So this is only footage I have of me spraying with this particular airbrush. I left lacquer thinner in that bottle and so the rubber pickup tube got really softened and kept falling off. So I was really struggling trying to get it to paint smoothly. Uh, not that the brush itself wouldn't do a good job, it's just because what I did leaving lacquer thinner in it. So live and learn. Um, I switched right here to my fine airbrush. Uh, that was great to get around the scope and some of the tight areas. Uh, but right here I switch over to my Harbor Tool and Freight touch-up gun to get a more smooth even coat uh, across the entire gun so I'll show that process here um, as I finish up the brown coat uh, it covers up the paint uh, of the tape a little more than I would have liked it to but all in all it came out really good